Hey guys, what's up? It's Raven. It's officially spooky season, so you know what that means. It's time to decorate my whole house for Halloween. If you know, you know I like to go all out for pretty much all holidays with DIYs, decorations, parties, the whole nine. Last year, I did a haunted house theme for Halloween, so I did everything a little bit more scary, spooky, gory, like actually trying to be genuinely scary for the most part, and I had a haunted house themed Halloween party party for my friends. But this year I'm switching it up a little bit because I want to go for more of a chic upscale aesthetic vibe with my Halloween decorations. I still want to have fun with it. It is Halloween after all. I'm just trying to find a balance between fun, scary, spooky things, but also things that actually look nice in my home and kind of go with my existing home decor. So I'm going to be doing a ton of DIY projects. Although I do definitely already own a bunch of stuff for Halloween from previous years, I still wanted to go shopping just to see what was new on the shelves and also to get a bunch of supplies for all of these DIY projects that I'm gonna be doing. So I ended up with a pretty decent haul of stuff from mainly Walmart, Dollar Tree, and Michael's Craft Store. I did get some store-bought decor items. I'm gonna be revamping some of these items, but also some of them were just cute as is and kind of already go with the theme that I'm going for. I wasn't able to find too much stuff that went with the theme I was going for. A lot of Halloween stuff is more on the scary, gory, just like more flashy side, and that's not really what I'm going for. So that is where all of these DIYs come into play. The first project is extremely simple. Basically, I'm just revamping some old store-bought stuff that I already had to make it match this year's theme a little bit better. I'm taking these tombstones, which are just made out of styrofoam. I had these from last year and I actually tried to use them outside in my front yard. They kind of took a beating though because they kept blowing away and just tumbling everywhere. So some of them are damaged, but also I just feel like they look a little, I don't know, a little too spooky for the vibe that I'm doing this year. So I kind of want to tone them down just slightly and add some details to them so that it goes with the more glitzy glam aesthetic theme that I'm doing this year. So I went ahead and spray painted them more of a flat gray cement color just to kind of tone them down and cover up any imperfections. I've also seen on Pinterest where people have painted them completely different colors to match whatever vibe they're trying to do or match their home decor. My vibe in my living room where I'm going to be putting these is a lot of black, white, and gray so I didn't need to do too much but I just wanted to tone them down a little bit and then I'm going in with some gold metallic acrylic paint and a little brush to add some little detailing to some of them. and I even added glitter to some of them, which I know is a little ridiculous because why would a tombstone have glitter on it? But I mean, I would want my tombstone to have glitter on it, so I don't know. Like I said, last year I did the truly haunted house theme, so I was trying to make everything pretty realistic. This year, it's all about being cute, so all logic goes out the window. <laughs> The next thing that I wanted to repaint is this little skeleton that I already had from last year. He's cute on his own and obviously he looks more realistic with this paint job, but to make him cuter, I wanted to make him a gold metallic skeleton. So super easy. I just got some metallic spray paint and completely painted him with like about three coats. I think with this metallic spray paint, the more coats you put on it, the better it looks. It starts to actually look more like it might be made out of metal instead of plastic, but you 
gotta get a really good even coat of paint on there. I think when it comes to any kind of holiday decor, what I've noticed is that what makes it look kind of cheap or dinky or tacky is when a lot of things are made out of plastic, paper, or styrofoam, like those more throwaway materials versus wood, metal, like more sturdy materials, which look a little bit more upscale and elevated. Although a lot of my decorations really are made out of plastic and styrofoam, I'm trying to repaint them to make them look like they might be made out of stone, metal, wood, etc. On that note, these little pumpkins from Dollar Tree actually were ceramic pumpkins. So they were made out of a nice sturdy material, but the color scheme of some of them just didn't match what I was going for. So for these, I'm just repainting them for the sake of matching my color scheme a little bit better. Make sure you watch all the way until the end of this video because I'm gonna show you how I style everything all together, mixing my DIYs with store-bought items and kind of just giving you the full look. Okay, so repainting all that stuff was very simple, but now moving on to a little bit more of a complicated project. I wanted to make it look like there was a skeleton coming out of my entryway mirror. This is something that I saw on Pinterest, but when I saw it on Pinterest, they were doing it on a smaller scale. And you could tell that they got like a little cheap mirror and a little smaller skeleton and kind of glued it all together and made it its own separate thing. But I wanted a bigger skeleton, like life-size, coming out of my big mirror that's actually already in my entryway. So the struggle was how am I going to to attach it without ruining my mirror and how can I make it sturdy? So after I removed the legs from the skeleton, I decided to try to see how I was gonna attach it first just to make sure if it was even possible. The mirror in question, we want him to be like this. I guess, and reaching out at you also, which is gonna make it even harder because the balance pulls him even more forward. We put up the, I, the my suction thing, here and then attach the hook to the wall. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I was always thinking. We don't wanna put all the weight on the mirror at all. Because that, that would be too much strain. And with help from my assistant Zoe, we did get it up, except like five minutes after we walked away, we heard something pop and snap and it was already falling down. So we realized that the little command hooks that we used the first time were not strong enough at all. And we were gonna have to come back with something more heavy duty. In the meantime, I wanted to bedazzle and yassify the skeleton itself from my Pinterest inspo. I saw a lot of people doing this. So I took him outside, I sprayed him down with some spray adhesive to make him sticky all over and I sprinkled him with this chunky silver glitter. After he was completely covered in the glitter, I brought him back inside and I wanted to add a little extra razzle dazzle by gluing on some rhinestones. So I gave him a rhinestone grill and just put a few more rhinestones all across him just to give him, you know, a little extra flair. What does this represent? I don't know. It just looks cool. Like I said, all logic is out the window with this year's theme. Back again, trying to get Mr. Bones attached to the mirror. He's all blinged up. I learned from the first time that 
we needed much stronger, more heavy duty command hooks. We were trying to get the super tiny clear ones so that it would be less noticeable, more invisible and help with the illusion of him actually looking like he's floating out of the mirror, but they just were not strong enough. So we had to get these large utility hooks that can hold five pounds each. And I'm probably gonna end up using like three of these. The only thing is they're these big chunky white hooks. So they're gonna be a lot more visible up there, but hopefully we can kind of disguise it. So now that we've got the stronger command hooks, I was feeling pretty confident that this would work out a lot better. And it did. I just used a combination of the command hooks with some clear jewelry string, not the stretchy kind, but like the sturdy plastic clear, I don't know exactly what it's called, jewelry string, kind of like fishing line. And then some little suction cups with hooks on it to attach it to the actual glass of the mirror. But basically I was just making this up as I went along, just trying to make it as sturdy as possible, putting multiple points of contact using three command hooks and I think four suction cups and a lot of that string tying it tripled, quadruple knotting the string so that it was super strong. Trying to get it up there, but also having it lean over was kind of the challenging part, but I ended up figuring it out. He's up. I don't know how sturdy. He seems more sturdy than the first time for sure. I do think I'm gonna go back and just add more strings, more everything, just so it's like extra secure. But this is the main setup. Three hooks on the top holding his neck and shoulders, three suction cups holding his like pelvis up, <laughs> pelvic bone. I would love to be able to put his arms out. I'm like testing the walkway from the front door so you don't get poked in the eye. I think we're good. The final touch to this project was to add a spider web going across the whole thing. Number one, because the command hooks that I had to use were pretty visible. And so I wanted to put something there to kind of try and detract from that or hide it a little bit. But also I had kind of seen this on Pinterest and I just felt like it looked cool. So I put the spider webbing going across the whole thing, pinned it around the mirror. You can just use thumbtacks or little pieces of tape for this. And then I also had this big fake spider that I decided to put up at the top to look like this was the spider who made this web. Okay, so that project was a little tricky, but it ended up turning out really well. This next project is also a little bit more on the tricky side and it was kind of halfway a fail, but halfway a success. These are little cornstarch ghosts. So the idea is to make it look like a piece of fabric is floating by itself with nothing inside, just like a real ghost, like Casper type vibes. So this is also something that I did not make up. I saw it on Pinterest, TikTok, everywhere, but I was kind of confused on exactly the right method to use to get it to work because I've seen where people use different things to make it stand up. I ended up landing on a recipe that just calls for cornstarch and water, but judging by my final results, which you'll see, I'm not sure if that was the best option or if something else would have worked better. I'm gonna make three little ghosts, two small ones, one big one. The head is gonna be a balloon, so. Yay big for the big one, I think. And it should just sit in there like that. Don't really need anything to attach it. For the big one, I'm just gonna have it be normal draped down with no arms. So it's just gonna be like that. But for the little ones, I'm gonna make them have arms and make each one do something different <laughs> or try to. I have this floral wire, but first they need their little heads. For their little arms, I'm gonna use this floral wire, wrap it around the vase, and then I'm gonna do like just a rough shape because the fabric's gonna drape over it. And for this one, I'm gonna try to make his arms do something else. Maybe he's reaching towards you. So here's our little forms. I gotta make my little slurry. For the slurry, it is a two to one ratio of cornstarch and water. So however much cornstarch it takes, but you do also have to heat it up to help it get thick. I'm gonna microwave it, get all the lumps out. Now it's not thick at all, but let's see how thick this gets after I warm it up a little bit. 30 second intervals. Is it thick? not thick. Let's try putting more cornstarch. I'm gonna warm it up a little bit more because it's still not getting thick. 
This feels like it's getting waterier the more I heat it, so I'm not gonna heat it anymore. I did see where you're supposed to let it cool, so maybe it'll thicken once it cools. Maybe I need a lot more cornstarch, I don't know, but this is just pure watery consistency. So I'm gonna put in more cornstarch. I'm gonna mix this in and make sure it's nice and dissolved at least, and then put it in the fridge to cool and see if that does something. It's been a few minutes. She feels thick at the bottom. Feels like oobleck at the bottom. It's really not thickening. Let's give it some more time. It's still not thick, but there is a lot of cornstarch in this water, so I feel like it should work. Like the idea is that it's gonna harden once it dries, so as long as there's like a lot of cornstarch in here, hopefully it works. I don't know, but it's definitely still watery. I don't know how to get it thick. My little twist that I wanted to do on this is to add glitter to the slurry so that the whole thing will be covered in glitter straight into here, I'm gonna put quite a bit because I really want it to like show up. Silver as well. Making potions. Our slurry is glitterified. Setting that aside, now I need to cut the cheesecloth to size. One layer by itself feels like it may not harden and like stand up. I feel like if I double layer it, it might work better. How much do we need to make sure that it touches and drapes. So in theory, I want it to end up being like this. I have a baking pan here as my surface. Just gonna dunk it in and really saturate it. Oh, it shows the thickness on the fabric. It kind of is like attracting all the cornstarch. Oh, that like used up all the, I'm gonna have to make more. Or maybe I should squeeze it out. It needs to be well coated, I feel like, but it also doesn't need to be like soaking, dripping wet. The glitter worked for sure. I'm just re-moistening it a little bit. <laughs> just especially right here, because I really want this to actually hold this round shape right here. This is like paper mache almost. These two little guys, I cut another two ply piece and I am going to submerge, bring it out slightly. I actually was pretty proud of my idea of adding glitter to the solution. That part was looking really good, but I honestly was not too hopeful about the integrity of the actual ghosts themselves because it just didn't seem like it was gonna be sturdy enough to stand up by itself. But I just went ahead and let it dry overnight. And when I came back to it the next day, they actually were looking pretty sturdy. So it has been 24 hours. Our little ghost men are dry. I did already test one out just to see if it was working at all. And it did pretty much work. It's fragile and I had to be really careful to get it like that, but let's see if I can get the rest of these off. I think I used maybe a little bit too much cornstarch because it's really powdery. I don't know if that's typical. And then I have to carefully get it off of the wires and the vase and the balloon. It feels more sturdy than the other one. And then what I did was I just went ahead and popped the balloon to make it easier to like get it off of it. Cut it with scissors. Ah, okay. I think he worked out pretty good. They're kind of hard to like move. He's actually easier to move. He holds his shape a lot better than the other one. <laughs> now for the big mama one, I'm nervous. I don't know if it's gonna hold itself up. I mean, it feels pretty stiff, but let's see. First I gotta scrape it. Maybe I do it like this and pull it from the bottom. Huh? Oh, so far so good. <laughs> okay, and then cut the balloon. Oh! <laughs> no, the head is super floppy. Yeah. It's not gonna work. One thing I could try to do is get another balloon, put it back on there, 
put a lot more of the cornstarch solution on the top part to really like strengthen it and then it might work. So I might go back later and try to like redo this one. So for the little eyes, a lot of people on Pinterest and stuff were using like black felt or fabric for the eyes. But since I'm doing kind of this glitterized version, I had this like chunky glitter cardstock paper that I thought would just be a cute little touch to go with the glitter theme. So all I did was draw my two little circles that I wanted for the eyes. Doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, I think it's cuter if they're a little misshapen. And then cut these out. Then I just took a little bit of glue. I just happened to have this E6000 hot glue or whatever would work probably. And just put a little bit on there. Give him his little eyes. his arms go like this is because I wanted to try to make him hold something. Like this little mini styrofoam pumpkin is actually the perfect size, but I don't know if he's sturdy enough. It kind of just stays by itself. I was like, I don't know if he's sturdy enough to hold it. This is really super lightweight because it's just styrofoam. So I am going to put some glue. I am sad that the bigger ghosts didn't work out, but I am glad that at least the two smaller ones worked and I feel like they're super cute, especially the one holding the pumpkin. Okay, this next project is probably the most elevated, chic, upscale project out of them all. I just really feel like it adds that extra touch of just like elegance in a way, I guess. So I got this skull head from Michael. Super cute on its own. You can use it as a bowl, put candy in it, put whatever in it. But I saw on Pinterest, of course, going back to Pinterest, a picture where somebody had something similar and they used it as a flower vase. So I also got these faux flowers from Michael's trying to get them in you know the right colors and vibes to kind of go with the theme again and i just got some floral foam to put inside of the head so that i could stick the flowers inside a lot of places sell some version of some sort of like open skull head vase or bowl so i feel like there's definitely cheaper versions that you could get and maybe just repaint it or you could get a skull head and actually cut the top of it out yourself to make it into a vase i feel like there's a bunch of ways around this but this one just was so cute on its own i just went ahead and like splurged on it and then and for the floral foam, I just got a few pieces and cut it to size to make sure that it fully filled up the whole top of the head. And then with the flowers, I am no florist. So I was just winging it, cutting the pieces apart and kind of just arranging them in a way that I thought looked good. And I feel like it turned out really nice. This really represents what I was trying to do with all of my Halloween decor this year. Still very clearly Halloween themed, but just more elevated, put together. It actually looks like a real piece of home decor versus just like temporary holiday decor, if that makes sense. So kind of in that same vein, I'm gonna be making two throw pillows to add to my couch. Just like with the flower vase, throw pillows are something that you would normally have in your home on a regular day. So adding some that are just on theme for the holiday, it kind of just blends right in and I feel like it looks really nice. So I'm gonna be doing two DIY throw pillow designs that I once again found on Pinterest, but I'm gonna be adding my own little twist to it. For these Halloween pillows, I'm gonna do two types. The first one is a spider web design using this thick, chunky blanket yarn. I guess technically for a spider web, it would technically make more sense to have like a black background and white yarn so that the spider web would be white, more like a real spider web. But on my inspo pick, it's the opposite way. And I found these gray pillows that I felt like kind of went with my home decor. So I'm doing a gray background with a black spider web and like, it'll still look like a spider web. We get the point. So looking at my inspo pick. It looks like she has one, two, three, four, five long strips and then these three wiggly ones, but they're going underneath the long ones, I guess, to kind of help it stay down. So I'm just gonna cut all my pieces first, one going diagonal across the whole pillow, another one 
out like this. Measure how much I need. This part's kind of hard to measure because it's like looped up. Loosely placing the design so I can kind of get an idea and then cutting it a little longer than I think, just in case. The first thing that would be helpful is to lightly sketch out my design so I have like a template and a guideline of where I'm gluing the string and it's not so willy nilly. So I'm just using a Sharpie. follow my guideline with the string. I'm doing the loops first. That way when I put the strips on top, it'll help hold it down. But let's see if this fabric glue even holds it enough in the first place. holding. Okay, we got all our squiggly parts on. good amount of glue so it really sticks once it's dry. So I put my spiderweb pillow to dry and now I wanna try this little ghost yarn design. It looks pretty simple and self-explanatory. I think I could have maybe gotten a thicker yarn to make it a little easier, but this was the best one I could find. Basically, it looks like a few strips of yarn put into the little half loop shape and then little eyes on top. And I do also wanna do these tassels. On this pillow, they just left it as like regular tassels. But I saw on this other pillow how they actually turned the tassels into little ghosts too. So I wanna put these style of tassels on my pillow. Since my yarn isn't like super thick, it's gonna take like quite a few layers to build it up because you're basically starting from this and then you're adding another one and another one and another one around it until you get the size that you want. Maybe it won't take that many, let's see. Two, I think I'll just need like maybe four. This is three, yeah, I think four is perfect. Four little loops makes it like that, which I think is like a good size. So I'll do a bunch of those because I want it to be going across the whole pillow and I'm just gonna glue it down with the fabric glue. Hopefully that works. So starting with the first one in the corner. Now that I figured out the process, it's not hard, but it's just gonna be pretty tedious to cut all these little pieces of string because I probably need to do like 13 or 14 more of these and then also do the tassels. We'll just keep it going. Just need to make them all like about this long. One, two, three, four. Get my little shape going and then I'll trim it after. Now, now that I see what I'm doing, maybe I can do the glue easier. Getting the hang of it. You learn as you go, trial and error. I actually think it looks kind of cute with the jaggedy edges too. It makes it look like a, like he's like floating away or whatever, but since the other ones are trimmed, I'll give all of them a haircut. Of 
Okay, so I have all my little ghosty guys glued onto the front of my pillow. It actually didn't take as long as I thought it would. Once you kind of get the hang of it and you get a little system down, it's pretty easy. I still need to figure out what I'm gonna do for their little eyes. There's so many different things you could use. Sequins, rhinestones, little pieces of felt. I wanna do something kind of glitz and glam to go with the rest of the theme of everything else that I've been doing. So I'm trying to decide if I wanna do like sequins or rhinestones or something. But first, I'm gonna add the little ghost tassels to the corners. I already made one just to make sure I knew how to do it. It's actually really easy. All you need is something, a piece of paper, cardstock. This is just the lid to my rhinestones. That is about the size of the tassel you wanna make. And then you get your same yarn and you just start wrapping it around a bunch of times, making sure you do it enough times so that your end product is nice and thick and full. So I did it about like that, I would say. Cut that off. Then you're gonna cut yourself another little piece so that you can go underneath and tie all of this together. And just double knot it. This is gonna end up being the top hanging string of your tassel. Then you can slide this off and you should have a little loop like that. Do it like this so you have your thing at the top. Cut yourself another piece of string and this is making your ghost's neck slash head. So you're just tying it off towards the top to make the head like that. And it just sort of rounds it out, double knot that. And then for the legs, they're all looped together at the bottom so you just stick your scissors in there so you can cut the loops and make it just fringe and make sure you get all the loops. And voila, you have your little tassels. Now this is just a tassel. I mean, you could do this for like a non-Halloween, which is a regular tassel, but obviously making them white and putting eyes on it is what makes it look like a little ghost. So I'm just gonna make two more so I can have tassels on all four corners of my pillow. To attach my tassels to the pillow, I'm doing it on the back side on each corner. I'm just taking a good old needle and thread with white thread and using this top string to attach it. I'm letting it hang off just like half an inch right here from the corner and then I'm just gonna tack it down right there and I'll end up trimming off this excess. But just going through that one layer of fabric, nothing crazy, just looping it to secure it on there. And then I'll pull it tight and I'll end up tying that off. I'm just gonna loop around a few times to make sure it's really on there. Pull it really tight and then tie it with the tail of the thread. Double, triple knot it. And then you can even go one more time and trim it. Boom, I'm just gonna trim it like that. Boop. So then from the front, they hang like that. I ended up finding these perfect sheets of black and gray rhinestones at Michael's to use for the ghost eyes. I just really wanted to add something with a little touch of sparkle because a lot of the other things that I'm making has that sparkly glittery rhinestone feel to it. A lot of people just use regular little pieces of felt or something for the ghost eyes, but I felt like this was the perfect thing for my vibe. So I just went ahead and glued on all the rhinestones with permanent fabric glue so that it would be super strong. glitter and everything. This next project is super simple and pretty quick to do. I got these craft pumpkins from Michaels and I'm just going to be covering them in Mod Podge and then sprinkling glitter all over them to completely glitterify them. I originally wanted to make disco pumpkins and get those individual mirror tiles and cover them one by one to make it look like a disco ball, but I knew that I really didn't have the time or patience to devote to a tedious project like that, although 
though it probably would have been really cute, this was kind of like a compromise, a faster, easier way to make a shiny, sparkly pumpkin. This was super quick. It takes no time at all to paint the Mod Podge on, sprinkle the glitter on. And so I did a solid one. And then I also ended up doing one where I only put the Mod Podge in the creases of the pumpkin to give it more of a striped effect. There are so many ways that you can glam up a craft pumpkin, whether you're using glitter, rhinestones, sequins, beads, the actual disco tiles, but this was probably the fastest and easiest way and I feel like they turned out cute. Okay, next up, I am going to make a Halloween wreath. Usually wreaths, I think of Christmas, but I see where people do wreaths for every season. So I feel like it works. This wreath is actually a culmination of kind of like leftovers. I bought this wreath, wasn't sure what I was gonna do with it. I feel like this plain white stick branch design could really work for any holiday, depending on what you attach to it. But I ended up just kind of using my leftover decorations to decorate it. So I had this little sky skeleton that was originally just like a little plastic dinky skeleton from Dollar Tree. I did my gold spray paint trick on it to make it look nicer and I even added gold glitter on top to really bling it up. So I knew he was gonna be the star of the show. And I also had a few flowers left over from my floral arrangement. So I ended up making it look like he's holding the little flower. And then I happened to find these little bat clips. This was something I just had lying around from previous years and they worked out perfectly to just clip on to the wreath to add a little something to the other side of it. And if I want to, I can actually take them off and use them for something else. So this was super simple and didn't take long at all to put together. And it was the perfect way to just kind of use up my leftover stuff. The last DIY that I did was cutting out a bunch of paper bats and I actually ended up using these in three different ways around my house. So this project is definitely easier if you have a Cricut maker, but you can do it by hand. If you're doing it on your Cricut, all you have to do is search bat on the Cricut software. There's gonna be different styles that come up. I did a mixture of different kinds and I cut them out on glitter cardstock paper. You definitely wanna use cardstock just so it's a little sturdier. And I decided to go for glitter because it's, you know, it's glitter. So I cut out a bunch of different sizes of bats with my Cricut Maker. And since I was using a Cricut Maker, I was also able to cut out some lace bats. I found this image of a lace style bat illustration online, brought that into the Cricut software and was able to really easily just let my Cricut do all the work of cutting out these intricate little shapes. Although technically you could still do it by hand with an X-Acto knife if you really wanted to. I did these paper bats last year, but this year I came up with the idea of incorporating the lace style because I felt like that would give it kind of that elevated look and they turned out super cute. So the first way that I used these bats was to make it look like they were flying out of my fireplace. I used double-sided tape or like little glue dots. You can also use those little foam dots, just anything kind of sticky that won't damage your walls to hang them up. And I just placed them looking like they were coming out of the fireplace and kind of circling around my TV all the way up. I put the larger ones towards the bottom and the smaller ones at at the top to kind of sell the effect that they're like flying away. The second way that I use them is by taking the smaller bats and making it look like they were flying inside of this glass cloche. I saw this on Pinterest as well. Basically, I just took some of the smaller sizes and taped them to a piece of that same clear jewelry string that I used to hang the skeleton before and then just attach that little piece of string to the inside of the glass cloche. So when it's all together, you don't really see the string and it looks like there's a few bats flying around around inside of it. And then the third way is to take some of these bats and place them inside of a lampshade so that when you turn the light on, it gives this really cool effect. Thank you. 
I did end up doing a few extra projects and honestly, it's early in the season at the time that I'm recording this. So I probably will end up doing even more projects and those can be found over on my TikTok. So make sure you're following me there. But those were all of my DIY projects so far. I went ahead and styled them along with all of my store-bought decor that I had and here's how it all turned out. 